Hello. We were meant to be going to Darmstadt today, but because the transport system had other ideas and the fact that it's snowing, we decided to do a little video about what we've learned after moving to Germany. Um, so one thing to know before you move is the German tax system, which was quite a shock for us <laughs> when we first moved here. Um, it's the fact that they tax everything. Mm -hmm. So we got a letter in the post saying that we are being charged because we might hear the radio. And it's like they, they just want your money. That's all they want. Update. Turns out snow is cold. So we are going to do the rest of this video at home. So, we mentioned already the taxes in Germany, which is a very big thing. And as Pete was saying, essentially, if you have ears, you're going to be taxed. <laughs> yes, it's almost like the German like TV license. It works at a radio, a TV, anything. So if you're in a taxi or a supermarket and the radio is on, you have to pay this tax. Although, interestingly, if you, and helpfully, if you have a serious enough disability or if you're deaf or partially deaf, then you can apply for a discount. So the cost of living in Germany isn't too bad. I think because we've been living in New Zealand for so long and everything was going so high, mm -hmm. we're probably a little bit more lenient towards the Germany at the minute. Although even for the UK, I think the costs in the UK obviously have been rising so much too. Um, and I think the same with most of Europe, obviously once Corona hit, everything's kind of skyrocketed. <laughs> also in Germany, something you have to consider is where they get that gas from, which it directly impacts the cost of gas, electricity. It's looking like a cold winter. It's going to be a very expensive, expensive winter. <laughs> um, even our, when we first signed up for bills, even for two people, and we don't use a lot it was looking sort of 250 euros a month, wasn't it? For like the... Electricity, gas. That was like almost each, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like, obviously there are ways to try and get around it and we've managed to find a company that will base what we're actually using. So at least we can try and monitor it so there are options. But it's something a bit scary in terms of if you're looking at a budget in Germany for the winter. The most important thing. <laughs> So the German food is pretty much as expected. There's lots of meat, lots of sausage, lots of schnitzel, lots of bakery, lots of bread. I love the word schnitzel. Schnitzel is such a funny word. We've been surprised by how much Italian food there is in Bad Homburg, as mentioned in the Bad Homburg video. But we think we've both been a bit surprised by how many vegetarian options there are. I mean, as a vegetarian coming into New Zealand where we were before, that was quite difficult because most Kiwis assume that vegetarian means you still eat chicken. But coming into Germany, I was really surprised to see actually there's even in like the main supermarkets, there's always some sort of vegetarian sandwich to take away. Vegan options vegan in the options. freezers. Um, um, but also even when we go out for food, it's quite often... Yeah, it's not just one option. You don't just have to eat salad leaves. You can, <laughs> you can have nice food too. But yeah, I think it's achievable to be vegetarian in Germany. Yeah, 100%. 100%. You might find it more difficult in maybe the more rural towns, but it's definitely doable. Um, and then places like your big cities, Berlin, Frankfurt, Munich, like you'd have no issue at all being vegetarian or vegan over here. So if you're going for a meal in a restaurant, you expect to pay about 15 euros per main course. Also, yeah, but you can buy them just under or just over. Yeah. Um, especially in Bad Homburg. Bad Homburg is quite a well off part of Germany. It was a very posh accent you used Well, I mean, a very, very well off really part of Germany. Germany. <laughs> so you might be able to find somewhere a bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. if you go into Frankfurt itself or in the main cities, Berlin, Munich might be a bit more expensive. Yes, yeah, so if you're wanting a, ch a quick bit of street food, you can get one fairly cheap. So on the weekends, the transport can be a little bit less reliable, um, more so because it's a reduced service, so the buses might run every 20 to 30 minutes rather than every 10 minutes. You also need to be aware of making sure you pay for your tickets when you get on the bus, 
An example, the other day, for one of the first times, uh, Pete got his ticket checked by a plain clothes officer. Yeah, got on and then three people just turned up with their little machines and luckily, like... luckily I had my card, but a few people did get done. You can what? get but... advanced tickets um, for, I believe, the month, maybe even the week. Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise, you can get single tickets. No, and the, the trains are good. The S Bahn has free Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. U Bahn doesn't, but it's still clean and usually plenty of seats. So, when you first move to Germany, there are a lot of forms you have to fill in. And sometimes <laughs> we filled in a form and we were told, oh no, that is the <laughs> wrong form. So, we have to fill it in a different form. Mm -hmm. We had several meetings. If you're moving to live in Germany, then you need to register your apartment as your permanent address. And you're supposed to do this within two weeks of when you move into the residence. Yeah, that's not just for foreigners, that's for Germans as well. Every time you move, you have to register with the town hall. Mm -hmm. um, and that, so yeah, that just involves going in, taking a contract or a Vornen, um paper, which is like an apartment paper. Um, and they just go through, check your details, stamp it. It's not like an issue as such, it's just one of those things you have to do. Um, but if you don't do it in the two weeks, then you are liable to pay a fee. But yeah, it's definitely something you need to know about that we didn't know about when we first got here. What else didn't we know? Oh God, so much. Because <laughs> of how Britain's relationship with Europe is at the minute, but now we need to have certain mm -hmm. forms and IDs a work permit. A work permit. Yeah. Which was fine. The meeting went really well. It's usually set up by the employer. Yeah. Um, and it went smoothly. It just, just took a bit of time. Even that though, you have to make sure it's an official passport photo that you take with you. You can't make your own. You have to go to the machines. Um, whereas that's a little bit different to say New Zealand or the UK, where as long as you've got the right measurements for things, it's accepted. You do. Here, you have to go to the machine because they have special cutters that only work for... Who knows, it's German. Okay, next thing for me will be the German language. <laughs> Obviously, you know, moving to a new country that has a different language to your language, you need to know the language. It's It does really take you back sometimes and you end up in situations where you just kind of freeze. <laughs> and, and quite a lot of Germans do speak English. They won't, but they, they yes. can. <laughs> Which is completely fair, you know, we've come to Germany, we're not no, expecting yeah, yeah, anybody to speak. We always English. try and speak in German first, but if we do freeze, as you say, then they usually just go, ah, we'll just speak English. Too. Like, aha, uh -huh, an English person. <laughs> or they'll kind of awkwardly shuffle away. <laughs> but we've learned there are a few options for learning the German language too. Obviously Duolingo. Everybody loves Duolingo, right? That angry little owl. There are also language courses and textbooks that you can buy and follow along. Duolingo helps with the, the easy phrases about how to say hello, thank you, goodbye. Vocabulary. Supermarkets Super, yeah. and restaurants are helpful for. Mm -hmm. But some of the phrases... I've never had to say to someone that my bear never cooks. Or my, my grandma loves my dog. <laughs> if, you, if you've used Duolingo, you'll understand what we're talking about here. Some of the phrases can be very set and <laughs> might not apply to um, real Germany. Real life. The people we've met have been absolutely lovely, very helpful, very friendly. The thing to remember though as well is that German stereotype is there for a reason. The whole British thing of if you're walking down the path and then you see someone and then you do the dance of you walk that way, you walk that way. That doesn't happen here. They just walk like that. <laughs> so you need to get out of the way. The Germans don't waffle. Yeah. They very much get to the, what they want to say and they are very direct about it. But that doesn't mean that they're being rude. It's just that's how they are. Yeah. And it's very helpful, actually. <laughs> so overall roundup of Germany. I'm going to try to give these a score out of 10. Honest opinions. And uh, let's see how we go. So, number one. Transition to Germany difficulty-wise. One is low. Easy. Ten is difficult. Nine. Ten. 
<laughs> yeah, I agree. Nine or ten. It's, yeah. yeah. Lots of forms, lots of meetings. Make some German friends before you do yes. it. Yes. <laughs> um, the food. I am a fan of a sausage. <laughs> um, Things so, that you should have put on a t-shirt. <laughs> I'm going to go with eight. 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 Yeah, it's a, yeah, at least a six, seven for veggie food as well. Okay, next one, cost of living. One being super cheap, ten being high. Overall, six, yeah. seven. It's not the most expensive place you've been to, but it's also not as cheap as it could be. However, when you count the taxes, where do we put it at? <laughs> taxes are... 11, right? 11, 12, 13, 11. 14, 15. <laughs> yes. Ridiculous. Okay, yeah. Um, next one, transport. Last one, transport. Ooh. I like the transport in Germany. Yeah. Lots of options. They're regular, um, clean, efficient. Eight? Yeah, eight or nine, I reckon. I think. And Europe has very good transport anyway, but Germany definitely meets all the expectations. So overall, I think we're both enjoying living in Germany. Um, if you live here or you visited, let us know what you found surprising about Germany in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers! Cheers.